So why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand if you are able.
Heavenly Father, we celebrate your amazing love this morning. You have ransomed me and every believer by the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. He willingly took our sins upon himself. You allowed your perfection to be surrounded and pierced with my mistakes and diseases. You suffered that I might live. How do I deserve what you have offered to me? Forgive my sins, O Lord. By your grace, forgive them all. By your great grace, teach me what it means to follow you. In the great name of Jesus, we pray, amen. amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, God has atoned for sins we could never cover. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. We are a new creation. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Amen. 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 May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with, with you. you. Please turn to your neighbor and share a sign of our Lord's peace with one another. Let's enjoy this time of welcome. Peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> And then you may be seated. Because of Christ, God has opened us to love one another. Part of loving is giving. Our regular offering is in the back. This is a special time for the giving jar. The giving jar is a special offering and a time for our kids to be God's hands and feet. Kids, now is your time to run and collect what you find from us. Today's giving jar is designated to Faith in Action, our local community outreach to our neighbors in need. Let us welcome this special time of giving. Oh, my God. 
Today's first reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 65. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The responsive reading comes from Psalm 16. Protect me, O Lord. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my heart. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol. Or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Today's second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Here ends the reading. Our gospel for this Easter Sunday is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with the first verse. But on the first day of the week, at the early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and I invite the, 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 the young ones to come forward, please. Good morning. Oh, yes. It's good to see all of you up here. You're dressed so nice and bright. Very good. Now, look what I got with me. I brought with me all these eggs. So where do eggs come from? Chickens. Chickens. All right. Okay, and birds. All right. I had bunnies this morning, so earlier this morning. So I'm glad you know that eggs come from birds. These are special eggs, though. And inside each one of these eggs, there's all kinds of little pieces, okay? And I'm just going to take out one of these pieces and, and see if you know what it is. Oh, come on now. They're puzzle pieces. Look at that. See, there's all kinds of puzzle. See, they're kind of a neat little shape. Yeah, see that shape? So now, what can you tell me? Now, that's now a puzzle piece. It's just a piece of the puzzle, right? You don't see the whole thing. So can you tell me what the whole piece, what, what the whole puzzle looks like by looking at one piece? No. 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 Well, have to put it you have to put it together. Well, very good. Well, you know what? I don't think we were mean this morning. I think all of the pieces to the puzzle are in here. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just real nasty when you're missing a piece. Yes. No, but what, what I want you to do, I'm going to give you one of these eggs to take with you, and I want you to remember that Jesus puts all the pieces together. Okay? Because sometimes it's hard for us to figure things out, but Jesus helps us to put all the pieces together. Think you can remember that? Jesus helps us put all the pieces together. So, Let's bow our heads and, let, and pray with me. So when I say, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for putting all the pieces together. Together in Jesus Christ. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So come up here and take one of these. Your parents or grandparents might have to help you unwrap it, but yes, and try to put that together. And let's sing for our kids. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. <clears throat> well, there's a young one that's got a special spot up in front this morning. <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is great to have our young ones with us, always. And uh, good to have family home. But you know, I uh, want you to think about something. You know, the truth is hard to apprehend at times. 
the truth is hard to, to kind of grab hold of. You know, just, just for instance, just for instance, I have three teenage daughters. Pray for me. <laughs> okay? You know, I have been trying to instill the truth, this, this value of picking up after themselves. And, you know, some get it and some don't. In fact, I've got one of my daughters that I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to take at least the next couple decades before she maybe grasps the, 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 the truth of that, you know. And it just <clears throat> day after, you know, every day I pour out valuable wisdom into my children. But where does it go? You know, those of you who are parenting your kids, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure my parents said the same thing about me. Yeah. And of course, add to that the drama. All of the drama, <clears throat> which is always a longing for justice embedded in it, and maybe, well, and also a little passing off of their own little responsibility. Uh, but, you know, I, I get, to, get to hear... Uh, and listen to them talk, you know, Dad, th this is, you wouldn't believe what happened. You wouldn't believe what she did or, or what he said to me. And my teacher isn't fair. And on and on it goes. So we talk about this. And we talk about, okay, first of all, be careful what, how you talk about someone else. I mean, God loves them too. And it helps kind of slow the emotion down a little bit and kind of get to the truth of it. And the truth, hmm, the truth is that they are figuring out what we adults know. That life is not a trivial thing. That it is full of betrayal and violence. And we human beings are particularly skilled at inflicting it on one another. So the question that hangs in the air is that how do we become those who refuse to return Evil for evil. How do we become people who do not participate in the way the rest of the world works? Jesus came, God's Son in the flesh. You know, and just think of Jesus' followers. Their world was much harsher than ours today. Just li did you listen to the Isaiah, the Old Testament reading, where Isaiah said, when the, you know, the day is going to come when you're actually going to be able to eat the fruits of your own labor, that the crop will be yours, not someone else's. That the house that you build, you're going to actually live in it. Someone else isn't going to invade and take it from you. Now, can you imagine that? We take those things for granted. And the politics of their day were just as corrupt and power-hungry as ever. Uh, and in fact, many ways, much wilder than ours. And the empire builders of their day made life constantly threatened by war. There wasn't a generation that went by that didn't know it. And into that mess, Jesus spoke deeper truth. Listen to his words. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. If you save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And then he erased disease from people, the people that he touched. I mean, it was as if to recreate them. And then he also spoke of that time that it would come when he would be arrested. You know, Luke chapter 9 uh, records Jesus saying these words. The Son of Man must undergo go great suffering and then be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. Now, like a teenager that has to be reminded to clean up after themselves, Jesus reminded of them of what was in his future often. He wanted them to remember. Then the day came, and fear took over. And of course, you know what fear stands for, right? Forget everything and run. 
Forget everything and run, and that is exactly what they did. And when the women came to the tomb early that, 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 that the morning three days out, you see, you realize that they weren't coming to celebrate a victory. They were coming to mourn a loss. They came with herbs and spices and oils to prepare Jesus' body for the, its final burial. Well, there again is truth. That truth takes hold usually when there's a blow to life. You know, when there's a shaking of your foundations and, and an encounter with the truth, uh, when the truth takes hold, it burns away every lie that's in its way. It's life-changing. Now, Mary Magdalene and Joanna were two of the women that made the journey to the tomb that day. Now, the, the world had already, their world had already been rocked by Jesus uh, and the truth that he brought to them. You see, Jesus had delivered them both from life-crippling situations, and they followed him ever since. But seeing Jesus brutally beaten and executed on a Roman cross shook that truth as well, yes? And, you know, so they, they're, they're going to the tomb wondering, well, what is the truth? Is it survival of the fittest? Is it that betrayal, brutality, and violence actually rule? Or does Jesus go deeper than that? Again, truth takes hold when there's a blow, Right? And when there's a shaking and they, they approach the tomb, the massive stone had strangely been rolled away. The body was gone. And then two angels appear looking so bright they'd lit up everything in that, in that dark early dawn. Yeah. And they spoke the, uh, to the women some of my favorite words uh, of the Easter season. And that's the words that Pastor Scott was able to, to start us with uh, this morning. You know, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, but has been risen, just as he said. Now, no, and then the next things that, that they say are so important as, as they, uh, these angels tell the women, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then verse 8, then they remembered his words. They remembered. Now, to remember means to join the words to yourself. It means to remember, uh, to, to be able to take this in and make it a part of you. Before the, what they heard Jesus speak, was, it was just kind of loose information hanging out in there. And now they took it in as truth. And they, they brought it into themselves, made it part of themselves, and it burned away the lie that betrayal and has the last victory. It burned away the lie that violence has the last word. It's amazing. And they ran to the men with, with this news. Now, Women, you gotta, you got to pardon us men here. It took, a, it took a while for the guys to get it. All right? But truth will have its way with them. But just not quite yet. Now, Peter was one of those. who, who He, he, he uh, 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 <laughs> was way too curious and bolted out to the tomb and just had to see. If, was this true? Was it true? And he was absolutely amazed at what he saw. Remember. See, remember, Jesus had to go to the cross. It was necessary for him to take our sin and our death on himself, which meant and included facing the betrayal and taking in the violence that we dish out. And, and he took that, all of that upon himself, and Jesus was raised just as he said, alive, breathing, whole. You see, the next time they will find that they will see Jesus, the bruises and the lacerations inflicted on his body just days before were completely gone. He appeared very alive, more alive than they thought anybody could be. 
The only marks that remained were the marks in his hands and his feet and in his side. It was like God's thumbprint, that identification mark to say that this truly is Jesus alive, breathing, whole in front of them. And the, the truth is that Jesus Christ is risen just as he said. In fact, Luke records that Jesus even ate in front of them to show them that he was not some kind of a ghost, but really, truly flesh and blood. Now, here's a difference to note, you see. As Jesus was being arrested prior to going to the cross, the disciples forgot everything and ran. After seeing Jesus raised from the dead, they didn't run anymore. They didn't run anymore. They knew that betrayal and violence did not have the last word. In fact, there was no mark this life tries to lay on any one of us that has any lasting effect in eternity. Not one. Now rest in Christ who is the truth and then join him in the rescue of the human race. And that is exactly what the disciples did. Most of them going through great hardship being exposed to betrayal and violence themselves. And at the same time, they weren't intimidated by it. They saw how many, and, and, and as a result, they saw many people set free from the sins and the lies that they had followed before that as they took in the truth of Jesus Christ raised from the dead. And you know, that is the most powerful testimony of the truth of Jesus raised from the dead is that these men who before forgot everything and ran didn't run anymore. They shared this testimony and were willing to face anything to defend the truth of it. Jesus is truly risen. You know, and I have the same, that same testimony. It's, it's when the blows of life hit me that the truth of Jesus raised from the dead takes hold and burns away the lies that I follow. And that's also the beauty of, of being part of a family of faith is that when the blows of life hit, someone is bound to say, remember, remember what Jesus said? You know, it might be, yeah, find a way, to, we, we got to pray for your enemies. We've got to, you know, be generous with those who are, who are in need. And we remember. We remember. And fear is put in its place. And we are free to fulfill every call that God has placed on our lives. It's amazing. You know, literally billions of people have spoken that same kind of testimony. Billions. They have encountered Jesus risen from the dead and they have joined this truth to themselves. They have remembered it, joined it to themselves. So here again the words of the angels at the tomb. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. See, Jesus is raised. The new creation has begun. And we know that betrayal cannot be conquered by more betrayal, can it? Jesus calls us to tell the truth, tempered with love. We know that violence cannot conquer violence. Violence can only be conquered by love. And Jesus laid down his life to show us what that looks like. And Jesus was raised to demonstrate that he has truly conquered every effort to deliver death. And that the hopes of men like Isaiah are coming to pass. Where Isaiah writes, Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create a Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. Yes, the new creation has begun in Jesus. So, where are you this morning? What lies are you holding on to that need to be burned away by the truth of Jesus Christ risen from the dead? 
You know, it may, be, may feel like being crucified to co confess your sins. You know, it might feel like death to tell the truth. But it is in following Jesus as he has taken your sin upon himself that you find that laying that burden down is the first st step to healing. It is the first step out of the grave that you have lived in. You know, it's like teenagers hearing the call. You know, clean up after yourselves. And listen to the adults around you. You know, and, and then you'll find out you'll have an interesting experience. It's, it, it's going to be amazing how that adds to the peace of the house. Isn't that true? Yes. It's amazing. And you can experience that just right today. <laughs> But for us adults as well, it's being able to us, for us to grab hold of this truth and remember it to ourselves, that Jesus is truly everything he says he is, and he has opened the door for you to stand as someone who knows resurrection, who knows that betrayal and violence do not have the last word, and that it's to stand secure as someone who knows the truth and is willing to say that because Jesus is risen, so am I. And there's nothing that life can throw at you that can affect that at all. So walk into this life with great confidence. Literally billions of people are gathered together in groups large and small to remember and celebrate the truth of what Jesus has done. So with them, let us one more time join in the shout ringing across the world this day. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's all keep and live the faith. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you are able. And let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, you have filled our hearts with resurrection joy by your victory, your victory over sin, death, and the grave. With the church across the globe, we join to celebrate the power of your love. You have crushed Satan's head and, and have removed the chains of our guilt. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And gracious God, you have given us every reason to, to live life in truth and confidence. Set our minds on things that are above and help us to be open about our fears. Help us lay them before you that we may be renewed in the, in the joy of your salvation and restored to the purpose that you have for each one of us. Christ is risen. Heavenly Father, we lift to you those who need your healing this day. We lift to you June Potter, Joyce Witt, Cheryl Mosley, Destiny Hobbock, Pat Traumer and Jean Elke, Carolee Lindenberg, Ron Wagey, Donna Trigstead, Bev Belliott, and Zoe Bolden. Surround them with your healing spirit. And we lift to you the family of Sue Johnson as they, they mourn her passing. May they know your resurrection hope. And Lord, we also join with family and friends as, as they pray for Bruce and Brett, for Aaron and Chrissy, Jeanette, Talon, and Don. We pray for Peyton and Patty and Sarah, for Anita, Emery, Emmett, and Alyssa, and for those whom we name in our hearts at this time. Lord, give them your peace, which surpasses all understanding. Empower us to reach out to them as, as sisters and brothers in Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So Lord God, work boldly in us that others may hear your call and join us before your throne. 
we lay these petitions and our lives before you, Lord. Grant them and whatever else you see that we need. For we pray in the great name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we gather at the Lord's table, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And we do this for the remembrance of him. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin, and we do this for the remembrance of him. So gathered as one in Christ Jesus, we pray as he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared. You may be seated. And I invite our helpers to please come forward at this time. So for those of you in the outer areas, if you'd please stand and, and begin the process of communion, just come right around the back and right up to the front. Thank you.
Please stand if you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless you, strengthen you, and keep you in his grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
one more time. Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve the Lord.